Welcome back everyone to Pontus Fathom Press. Uh, this is our second episode of Comics and Manga Mondays at uh, Pontus Fathom Press and we are going through uh, some of the comic books and manga that really in influenced me and some things I think are culturally re relevant whether it's uh, you know um, uh, the upcoming Bleach Saga we're going to be going through some more Bleach. We did some podcasts on Bleach and I thought that was uh, uh, seemed like everyone liked those podcasts. And also, um, comics uh, are a big part of Pencil Fathom Press as well, and there's some projects coming up that you guys can be first to cross. Uh, speaking of those projects, just quick shout out here to the three-part Artificial Psychology of Desiring Machines, volume one of which is Impedance and Admittance in Desiring Machines. Volume two, the Psychoanalysis of Artificial Intelligence, and Volume 3, Computational Complexity in Psychiatric Agency. Uh, these are from August Moldenhauer, and they represent um, Moldenhauer's look at this concept of artificial psychology, meaning, you know, we know what psychology is. Uh, psychology is for humans, but artificial psychology is that psychology that will apply to AIs. And then if we further define, as the series does, an AI as a desiring machine, uh, it, it puts a specific uh, a Lacanian uh, view, although it's Jungian, it's, it's, it's Freudian as well. There's, there's a number of techniques and those different schools of thought, but there is a Lacanian aspect to this, especially in Impedance and Admittance and Desiring Machine, which really focuses on uh, Lacan's graph of desire. So uh, check these out if you're interested. Um, volume 2. Uh, volume 1 is out right now. Volume 2 is, is coming out probably this quarter, uh, Q1 2022. It's in proof copy now, and Volume 3 will be out in the, by the half the year. But Psychoanalysis of Artificial Intelligence, particularly interesting for sci-fi fans because it kind of goes through the history of um, AI and cinema and looks at some of those tropes that we see of AI, some of those tropes that actually are in the Fantastic Four, and especially in that classic John Byrne run. Um, wanted to do the second episode of uh, Comics and Manga Mondays with uh, a quick unboxing, let's call it, of, of Fantastic Four by John Byrne. But I really do want to go through this page by page at some point. So I'm thinking of spinning off a separate uh, series, just talking about Fantastic Four, uh, maybe working through the, the John Byrne saga. I mean, for me, uh, I think I came into the John Byrne saga with the run of um, Byrne as the artist, this Byrne uh, Synot run that I think goes from 209 uh, through to, I guess we can look at the back cover, uh, 209. Uh, and then we've got the Galactus appearance and then that showdown between Galactus and Sphinx, uh, Terax the Tamer, and I think it wraps up with maybe even Blastar or something like that. Those were some very early, those were like my friend down the road would say, hey, you got to come out, check out this Blastar the Living Bomb Burst. And we're like jumping off the porch, you know, b being Annihilus and Blastar. Also those epic Battles of the Titans. This comic was, I mean, this is what, 1979? So I was a young kid jumping off the deck wanting to be, Terax the Tamer. You know, I was always a huge uh, Silver Surfer fan. So when the uh, concept of Galactus now has, ter like I think the lore of Galactus's heralds was huge, right? And, and where does all that stuff come from? It comes from Fantastic Four. So not only does this omnibus uh, collect all of the John Byrne art, but it also collects some of these one-offs, like um, uh, this Spider-Man Human Torch runoff, which is always a fun team-up. Uh, the Things Marvel 2 and 1, which is Things team up book, and this is Thing versus Thing, which is classic. Uh, it goes into these burn episodes where he was, uh, and you got to say that at the same time I was probably reading X Men, and those are the greatest X Men, you know, X Men 133 with Wolverine. That's the same Burn Claremont run, right? So uh, that'll, that takes us up to uh, Burn's first run here, where it ends in 221. And then Byrne returns at this 232, and they've got this great uh, component here. Byrne returns for what I've got to say as a Fantastic Four fan is probably one of the greatest runs of the Fantastic Four, right up there 
with the Kirby Originals, uh, right up there with, uh, with the Walt Simonson FF stuff. I mean, these are some classic runs that, that happen, and this is Byrne doing everything. You know, and I think that, you know, maybe Byrne cut his teeth when he did, like, um, uh, Alpha Flights, right? He did words and pictures on Alpha Flights. He did those Supermans that he did, uh, which I read all of those. But, uh, but this is just, this is some fantastic stuff. So what I'm thinking of doing, if you guys are interested, maybe we work through the Galactus Sphinx Saga, you know, the Search for Galactus Saga, which is, which was really a Marv Wolfman uh, 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 joint. Wolfman Burn and Sinot doing his best to keep the Burn inks kind of Kirby esque here. Maybe we'll do a, a, an issue by issue uh, weekly on this if you guys are interested. I, I'd, I'd love to do that. But this book is fantastic. It's got about 40 or 50 um, comics throughout it. Most of it's the Burn writing and pencils. And it takes us right up to. Um, I don't think it's the end of the saga. I think there's one more burn omnibus after this. I, I feel like there's not all of the comics here. We got scrolls here. You got Frankie Ray. Got annuals. Got this Doctor Doom story. Some pinups. I mean, really a fantastic omnibus. Uh, so yeah. So my my idea is um, we could go through. Uh, we'll do this in a couple different ways. Maybe some of the one-offs. I'll, I'll handle those as just installments in um, in comics Mon in manga Mondays. I think that um, I think just having the weekly podcast may not do justice to this fantastic forerun. So, guys, let me know in the links if you'd like to see um, see us go through this in detail. And I and I would start out with the two hundred nine to the two twenty one arc, and then later in the year let's jump into the you know when Burns doing all the pencils and the art. Uh, Starting with 232, and we'll take it all the way up to the uh, this Terex the Untamed and Tyros the Terrible, right? This stuff is just great with Doom. Do we get to Doom in this? I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, I think we get to Doom as well. Yeah, this is some fantastic stuff, a fantastic run. So let me know if you'd like to see us cover it in that way. And um, also, uh, check out our links below. We do have. Um, a sister channel, Pontus Fathom Hobbies, uh, in which we mostly do miniature painting, board game play. Uh, right now, we're, we just wrapped up War of the Rings uh, filming, so that, that'll be coming out uh, next month. We've got, um, yeah, we did a huge uh, War of the Rings miniature paint through, so that, that'll be coming out like, next week, basically. We'll put that out next week. Uh, we do our monthly Eldritch Horror gameplay where I think we're on season eight right now um, Cthulhu Wars Cthulhu Death May Die we've got a, a, a season coming up of that featuring the Black Goat of the Woods and um, our investigators for that Battlestar Galactica Conan uh, and the games go on so if you're interested in board games and miniatures we also do manga uh, sorry we also do gunpla painting Evangelion. So go check out the Pontus Fathom Hobbies channel if you're interested in that stuff. Uh, as far as comics go, would love to go through this in detail. As you guys know, these omnibuses are fantastic. I mean, you guys have seen these. This is the one that I found was fantastic. I do have the um, full collection. I bought a Marvel Fantastic Four collection, a digital collection. And I've owned, uh, you know, the single one-off issues. But over the years, I've, I've sold them back, and I, and I kind of felt like the, I needed these on the shelf. So uh, would, would, would love to go through these omnibus books with you, uh, go through them page by page even, and just talk about the art, talk about the storytelling, talk about why Fantastic Four is important, uh, bring my uh, childhood stories of how we'd run off to the, you know, to the ring stand and pull these issues off the ring, uh, stand and, and, and go off and geek out on them. So yeah, I'd love to, love to do that and also talk about the big ones for me like X-Men, Daredevil, Spider-Man, Batman, uh, Fantastic Four. Uh, huge books for me. Hulk was a huge book for me. Iron Man was a huge book for me when I was a kid. This, these Fantastic Fours used to come to me in the brown paper. They used to ship the comics in a brown paper sleeve. I don't know if you guys know this, but, but uh, leave me, a, leave me a, a, a comment below if you used to get comic book subscriptions where you'd cut out the subscription thing from the bottom 
and send it off with those brown paper wrapped comics. And you'd always be mad if they folded them. It was horrible, right? Okay, guys, thanks for watching this uh, second installment of Comics and Manga Monday. Uh, we'll be sure to be posting some look-throughs on these below. We're going to do a deep dive on Fantastic Four as a break-off series. I think we're going to start off with that um, with that John Byrne, Marv Wolfman uh, 209 s session, the quest for Galactus. And then we'll jump into to the Byrne story and, and art uh, saga that starts with 232. Uh, later on after that. So let's try to turn that into a weekly. If you're interested in it, like and subscribe on this and, and share it and check out the links. Really appreciate it and uh, see you in the next podcast. Bye.